in the silence of the trophy room, where the echoes of past conquests resonate, we discover how to lead as men. It is not solely about the trophies we proudly display, but the courage to learn from defeats, humbly lead, and forge a legacy worth more than any physical accolade. Together, we'll discover how to lead from the trophy room. Welcome back to Leading from the Trophy Room. This is episode number four. Four. Uh, I can't num- believe it's four. Number four. And it's been a little bit. Uh, I know when you're probably listening to the podcast, you don't know all that's going on behind the scenes, but we started this idea in late spring, early summer, recorded the first three. And then, Jeremy, you went on a little vacation. Man, I did. I was gone all summer with the family, and it was great. It was yeah. incredible. But, so we uh, missed you. We missed you here at the podcast. Uh, by the way, I'm your co-host, Bo Mills. Jeremy White right here. Jeremy White. And, uh, guys, this podcast was just made for you. We've gotten a lot of great feedback so far. Oh, man, Bo. Some of the feedback has been, hey, we want to hear more stories. want to hear... Hey, how, what, what's y'all's relationship look yep. like? Like, uh, how do y'all sharpen each other? How do you challenge each other? Uh, more scripture. More scripture. Guys are wanting more scripture. And, and honestly, that one, I don't know why, but it surprised me. Really? And I think it's, uh, yeah, I just don't know. You know, I, I guess from only being a year in this role, over a year, you always wonder, um, do men love scripture is it too much you don't want to be more of the head but yeah they really reached out and they're like hey so so here's what i think i think us guys like we need it scripture like some verses some some uh scripture almost like uh, trusted tools that we mm-hmm. go to like a playbook yeah like a playbook but uh but there are some that just man you can just get a lot of use out of them yeah so, hey we're gonna go over one today hey today's i think today's like the like, main one every man needs to know this verse yep and, and so we're gonna play off this verse and kind of walk through it with a bunch of other verses that kind of walk through what we feel like uh life should be like for a man that's chasing after god that's right hey all right so i got a question before we get to the verse all right all right tell me about do you have a do you have a knife and what's your favorite knife and what's the story behind it i do have a knife uh Yep. So actually a guy, so we're based here in Granbury, Texas and a little town. We actually have a campus there, Glen Rose, not far from here. Um, I had a, I had a buddy when I was ranching who lived there. And, um, after the, the incident that happened to my family, he made me a knife and he put, uh, he put a, a gold, it's a silver knife and he put a gold bear on it after really? my son. And so I absolutely love that knife. He's custom uh, engraved in there. And yeah, I just love that knife. So I use that to cut the hay bales and, and feed Man, every day awesome. with it. Pretty cool. So that's a that's my favorite knife. All right. So the reason why I ask you about that, I didn't know the knife story. That's a, gr- that's a really good pretty story. Pretty cool. Pretty cool gift. Yeah. So because our verse today, Proverbs 27, 17, uh, don't look at your notes. Okay. Tell me what it says. Yep. Uh as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. Hey, that's <laughs> right. right. Not bad, not bad. Hey, good job. Good yeah. job. All right. So say it again. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens, sharpens another. another. So, Bo, here's a question. What what does that mean? Yeah. And, and honestly, being in this role and being around men a lot and having conversations with men, I think as a man, uh, this verse is thrown out a bunch mm-hmm. and, uh, sometimes it doesn't sit well with me because mm. I think, I think guys think and feel they have men in their life mm-hmm. that are good buddies and good friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Jeremy, I just don't think they're really sharpening them. Yeah. And, uh, so I, I've had those before in my life where, Hey, uh, we're great drinking buddies. Or we're great uh, golfing buddies, mm-hmm. or we go hunt together on hunting trips. Uh, but you leave those scenarios, and you just you either don't feel good about yourself, you don't feel like you got anywhere, you know, you don't feel like you grew in a positive way. And uh, I think that's how you know if you're being sharpened or not. Uh, you know, when you're fueled by a guy pushing you uh, towards God, or pushing you to be better in your marriage, or pushing you to be better as a father. Uh, then you might have the guys that are sharpening you in the right way. That, that's right. You know, uh, Bo, this summer, one of the things I feel like God gave me was kind of like a, a life motto uh, to uh, to chase God and see what happens. Mm. And uh, men that sharpen me 
are men that uh, challenge me to chase God. So I, I think of uh, like you're one of those guys. Uh, you're a you're a you're a guy that we we compete. It seems like on everything. Yeah. So like that's a good like God can use that for for good. Mm-hmm. You know. So 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 having men in our life that are sharpening us are men that are are pushing us, chasing us. Uh, to to chase chase God, so yeah, that's good. So we're gonna bring you. Uh, we're actually just ending a series here at Stonewater uh, called "Find Your People," and it's mm-hmm. all about why we need people in our life and mm-hmm. and the kind of people we need in our life and the kind of person we're supposed to be in other people's lives. That's right, and uh, and push them. And uh, this was actually just spoken about by all the campus pastors yeah. at all the campuses. And it's uh, the five ways, and we're going to call it the five ways as men, uh, that we can uh, uh, kind of live by and, and, and walk out in life. Yeah, to, so to this, the, is, this is how to we sharpen. This is how we sharpen each other. This yeah. is also, Bo, like this applies not just to men, but like every one of these five would apply like to you, you uh, leading your sons, mm. you leading your wife. Like, th- like this is good stuff. This me leading my daughter. You lead, yes, you leading your daughter. Yeah. And it's more so. So here's here's the misperception. I think a lot of times guys don't know what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus and a dude. Mm-hmm. Does that mean we sing girly songs and read the Bible all the time? Right. No. I mean, is that what it is? But I think I think that's what people think. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, Joey, your brother, he's also a, a pastor here. He on stage one time said, don't be weird. <laughs> like, like, and I think, uh, I think the perception is if you truly follow Jesus, uh, you wear Birkenstocks and you're weird. <laughs> you're, you're, uh, uh, you're more feminine. That's right. Or okay. whatever it is. So, so we're redeeming that. That's right. All right. When I read scripture, I don't read anything about Jesus being feminine. Yep. Okay. And, and all these that we're going to go over, you could put, uh, a girly perspective on it. Sure. Sure. But no, we're going to, we're going to truly share from our hearts on how we feel mm-hmm. uh, the perspective we, we look at when we, when we go over these. So the first one is what? Yeah. So the first one is this, is that uh, we're going to sharpen each other. That means that, that we've got to walk with each other. We got to walk with, each we got to walk with each other. So in uh, Proverbs 13, 20, it says, he who walks with the wise grows wise but the companion of fools suffers harm. Mm. I, that's a really good verse. That's a great verse for your kids right there. It is there. a good verse. And, you know, I look, uh, I hear that verse, and I think of the saying, I think it goes like, show me your friends around here. Show me your five friends, and I'll show you your future. Okay, yeah. Like, and, and it, and it kind of it kind of makes me kind of step through my life, and when I go through hard times, who's around me? Mm-hmm. And, like, how am I getting through those hard times? Because it's usually hard times are a why and you go one way or the other, and it's usually the people around you that dictate which way you go. Yeah. Hey, have you ever shared about your bar fight on here? No, I, we haven't talked about that well, yet. Share the story about your bar fight, because this is a really, it's a pretty good story. Uh, maybe you weren't with the wisest guys yeah. at, the, at the time. Yeah. Maybe there wasn't wisdom there. So Bo got in a bar a bar fight, all right? So so this shows that you can get in bar fights and still be a pastor one day. That's right. That's right. There's hope share, for you. Share that story real Yeah, quick. so one of my buddies got called to the big leagues, and he was coming back to get his stuff. He got called up where we were on the road. And so all his stuff was still in his apartment. So one night he comes back uh, to Akron, Ohio to pick up his stuff from his apartment. And he texts a few of us guys that were on the team playing that night. Hey, do you want to meet up after the game? <clears throat> and the bar was called Whiskey Dicks. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it, okay. was attached, it was all attached. It was right. attached. Just that's what it was called. Uh, we're not going to go there. Just that's what going. it was called. And uh, it was attached to the ballpark. So it was right there out of our clubhouse. Very familiar place uh, for, for the guys, part of the team, the people around. Hey, do not Google Whiskey Dicks. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, All no. right. Just Google me and you'll find the okay, ballpark. Okay, okay, that's All right. good. And then, uh, uh, so we did. We said, yeah, we'll meet you after the game over there. It was like a Tuesday night. Show up. There's nobody there. It was us, uh, a couple bouncers, and a couple bartenders, female bartenders, and uh we just were catching up. Hey, what's it like in the big leagues? Tell us some stories. He's only been there a week. And uh, it was really just to hang out with some buddies. Yeah, yeah. And, and friends. And we we're shooting pool and listening to the jukebox. And, uh, and well, the we stayed there too long. And we go to close out our tabs. And the guy who just got called to the big leagues was like, hey, 
I got your tab. I'll go pay your tab. So he walks over to the bar to pay the tab. And apparently he was flirting with the bartender who was this bouncer's girlfriend. Uh Uh-oh. And so he didn't like it very much. Yep. And uh, next thing we know, the bouncer's throwing beer bottles in the trash can. They're picking up. uh, His bar's about to close. And um, he gets in his face, and we go over there, and he just starts going off. Sucker punches one of my buddies. Oh, man. And so when he did that, if someone sucker punched you, Jeremy – I'm going to I'm Hey, gonna, I'm I appreciate go at, that. I'm going to go I appreciate but, that. So we all go at him. It was a bad ordeal. It yeah. became very public on mm. on the news, on TV. Did you make every ESPN? Every paper, I made ESPN ticker line. Are you kidding me? Breaking news. And it really was probably because my dad was the manager of the Houston Astros at the time. Oh, yep, yep. So when I got, when it finally came out, he's oh. walking off the field and all the reporters go up to him, stick cameras in his face and, Hey, how about your son getting arrested for a bar fight? And he mm. had no clue. I hadn't told him yet. Uh, and so, yeah. So, yeah. That hey, was hey a, Bo, I got a, I got a, a verse of scripture for you. Okay. He who walks with the wise <laughs> grows wise. Like a, a companion of fools <laughs> suffers, get that now. suffers harm. All I right? get that now. Hey, hey uh, I do want to celebrate or, or encourage you on something. So, so our relationship really started. Our friendship really started. Um uh, after I remember you were coming, you came to a staff meeting, you shared about God healing you from Crohn's disease mm-hmm. and in you an like incurable disease an incurable, which is an incredible story. Yeah. But after you shared that, we'll get into that sometime. Yeah. Yeah. After you shared that, you also shared, Hey, you were just looking to grow deeper in your relationship with God. And, and that to me, that was, that was like, Hey, go pursue this guy. Yeah. Go, go, go encourage this guy, go challenge this guy. So, so I remember we were in the parking lot um, here at the church in Granbury and I walked out and I was like, Hey, if you're serious about growing your relationship with God, let's walk together. Let's, let's meet up. Let's, let's talk about God. Let's, 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 let's walk, let's walk this thing out. And we started meeting at your ranch. Mm -hmm. You provided the ranch. I brought the Bible. That's right. (laughs) That's right. So I want to encourage you and say, thank you. Like you, you made the decision to, Hey, I'm going to go pursue this guy, intercept him where he's at and challenge him. And, and that's what you did. But it was, it was just walk. We just walked with yeah, each other. It wasn't anything crazy. Now, what was cool about that, but we started walking with each other and, and then tragedy hit. Yeah. Okay. You know, your son passed, but because we had been walking with each other, it, it wasn't weird. It wasn't like, it was. It was perfect mm-hmm. um, because now we we could walk together through tragedy. Yeah, I, I think a lot of times, guys, we want people to walk with us through tragedy, through crisis. But if we're not investing on the front end, yeah, nobody's there to walk. If you with haven't us. done life with them, it's hard. That's right. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, so I think I was just at a place, and I you you men might be at this place right now. Uh, I was a Christian. I was born and raised in a church, but I just went astray and was kind of not living the way I should be living, uh, struggling with certain things, anger, pride, um, probably doing things I shouldn't be doing, hanging around people I shouldn't be hanging around that was influencing those things. And I was just tired of it, Jeremy. I was just at a place Mm -hmm. going, I know I'm living this way. I know what I want. And I feel like the way I'm living is not going to get me what I want, Mm -hmm. uh, which is to be a great husband, to be a great father, to be uh, proud of myself, you know, like to to be somebody who uh, feels good about themselves, that you have a positive influence in people. And uh, so that's kind of where I was. And that Crohn's disease kind of put it all in perspective Yeah. of like, hey, you know what? I believe God just healed me from this. Mm Mm-hmm. I want to pursue this. I want to figure this out. I, I want to figure my life out. I want to figure this relationship out with uh, God. Um, and yeah, and so I just threw that out there. And so I'm thankful for you to, yeah. to come walk with me. Hey, chasing after God's a team sport. Mm-hmm. It's what we do together. And you know what? I have really enjoyed it. Mm. Like it's been fun. Mm. Um I've laughed a ton. Yeah, we've laughed a lot. I've cried a ton. And we've gone on some <laughs> great trips. Yeah, but it's just stories. It's, it's just fun. walking with each other through life. Yep. And uh and what I love and what I want to encourage men that are listening to this, you don't I'm not telling you to walk around and do this with everybody, but find certain people in your life that you trust and be open with them. And I feel like uh 
I have that in you. Mm -hmm. So, so I trust you. Uh, I trust your biblical knowledge. I trust your relationship with the Lord. And so I'm able to be open about a lot of things, whether it be a fight with my wife, uh, maybe something I messed up with, you know, my stumbles and shortcomings, and you're able to speak into them. Yeah. And so us walking together and doing life together, uh, we're able to speak into each other's life and you're able to point to scripture. You're able to call out certain things. Hey, I know you told me this and you said you're frustrated with Alicia, but really this is what I'm hearing yeah. in you, like, mm-hmm. and, and seeing from you. And maybe, and it, it, in those moments, it changes my heart and my perspective and I'm able then to go back and love my wife better. And I'm able to then turn to Jesus and pursue him, keep pursuing him. So you keep me on track pursuing Jesus. Hey, I'm feeling the love, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, hey, so guys, like we want to challenge you, like find men that you walk with. As yeah. you're walking with each other through life, like you really are going to sharpen each other. All right. Yeah. I'm going to get on to the next one, Bo. All right. All right. Here's number two. I like this one. So we work with each other. We work with each other. So we not only walk with each other. We do work with each we other. We work We're in the with same each other. office. Is that what you mean? <laughs> That's not exact. Kind of, maybe <laughs> just. All right. So here's what I mean. In in Hebrews uh, 10, 28, it says, spur one another on towards love and good deeds mm-hmm. or love and good works. So, so here's what I mean is that we're working with each other. Um, like we're challenging each other in ministry, uh, in serving other people. Uh, we're, we're, we're just working. We're working to uh, make our families better together. We're working to make the community better together. We're like, like, like think of it that way. Yeah. Uh, I think of, I think of you right now and, uh, your buddy Truxton. Yep. Okay. What, what are y'all doing right Good now? Good old Truxton Fox. We are, uh, I'm, the head coach in the league. Head coach. He's running a Pee Wee Football League. Yeah. But what's the goal of the Pee Wee Football League? The goal of the Pee Wee Football League is kind of bring a different perspective uh, as coaches to building these young boys into men. Like, t- uh, so 43% of the 260 boys that signed up mm-hmm. don't have fathers. How many? What? 43% of them. That's crazy. Almost half of them. So over a hundred and something boys Mm. are there with no fathers in the life. And so the idea of this league is to be that male figure in their life as an example, as a role model, uh, that they can look to and be encouraged by not just blowing a whistle, whistle and screaming in their face. Yeah. So that's a perfect example. Okay. So I think a lot of times when guys think ministry, uh, we, we don't, we don't go there. We go to a Bible study or, or something very, um, <clears throat> very churchy, man, you're doing a lot of ministry on that football field. A lot of work. And you're working together with other men. And, and what I love about when we work with other men, it really sharpens us. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, any kind of project that you do. So I've learned more about motorcycles this year mm. because I bought a motorcycle and I've had to fix the motorcycle. I've had to get it ready for trips. So, so because there's a project there, it's forced me to grow and to get better. My son Hudson, uh, he has his mo- so so we're working on it together, and it, and it pushes us to learn more. Well, same is true about God. As we're working in ministry together, as we're uh, challenging each other towards love and good good works, um, like it it really does raise our level of leadership. And it helps us to sharpen one another. Yeah. And I think God created men to work. Like we were, we were created originally to go hunt and gather, right? And we Mm -hmm. did it with each other. Mm -hmm. And then the women would be at home. And uh, in our culture today, we kind of get away from that feeling. But there's ways we can go out and hunt and gather together. Yeah. And and be working side by side with each other and sharpening each other while we do it. Here's a here's the thing we got going. So I live now in a golf community. Okay. And there's a there's a men's group, a part of that golf community, it's really big, uh, can be anywhere from 15. I think there's 115 involved in it. So you never know how many guys are going to show up on a given day. There's about three or four of us that have a common mission in that golf group. And that's just to be a little different, to be an example to a lot of these men that just maybe not live in the right way. Right. Uh, it's been fun. So what me and those three and four men do, I meet with them 
for breakfast and we're just doing life together outside of that. So you're walking with each other. Yep. And then like we come across this common mission of we keep talking about the golf game and our heart towards these men and our influence we want. And so then we get to go play golf and work together and being that influence and that example to these men. That dude, that's a perfect example. Yeah. So guys, we it's been to, really fun. Yeah. So guys, we want to challenge you to be creative in this. Mm-hmm. All right. Cause God really did make us to work. Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, like we should enjoy working, whether right. it be our work or uh the, that we do to the make money work, or, yeah. or or work for God. Yeah. So uh so we work together. All right, we got we gotta get to number three. We gotta get to number three. All right, what's three? You wanna say three? Three is uh we watch out for each other. We watch each other. And uh the the verse we're gonna go along with that is James five, nineteen through twenty. I, I don't I don't have that one memorized. I'm gonna have to pull it up. All right. Um, so, so you explain the point as I look it up. All yep. Right? So I believe, let me see if I'm right. Let me see if I pass all right, number two. All right. I believe James 5, 19 through 20 talks about uh, seeing a believer wandering off. Mm-hmm. And as a believer, uh, calling them back and calling them out, saying, hey, I see you wandering off. And as a believer, when you do that to somebody else, you're actually saving that person from being too far lost. All right, guys, if you're listening, say Bo is the man. Did I pass? Dude, I'm going to read it, okay? Brothers, if someone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings that sinner back from wandering will save the person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. Boom. Bam, man. I didn't read it, but my my might have sounded more manly. You, you're sounding pretty good. <laughs> is the bow translation. Yeah. And so, uh, <clears throat> you know, without knowing it, your example you gave earlier was exactly what you did to me. Uh, you might have saw somebody who was searching. Uh, I admitted that I was wandering and I wanted better. And you came mm. and you saved me. I mean, mm. it wasn't... You that saved like me. Sal- yeah, what but, salvation? But you, but like, yeah. you had a role. God used you uh, to get me back on track and start pushing. Mm. I would not be sitting here today if it wasn't for that moment in my life and you walking with me. Mm. You, you saw, you watched, and then you came and grabbed me. Yeah. So uh, last night I was. Uh, we 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 have a home group. There's like five couples that meet together in my house every Monday night. Okay. Is that, let's just speak into that real fast. Is that yeah. weird? Like, home, like if you're not a part yeah. of a home group, guys could hear that and be like a home group. Dude, it's, it's like awesome. These are like my boys. You're probably doing all these things in that. Home yes. Group. We're doing all these things, in our home group. The ladies are all, it's so good for my wife to have really, really, really close friends. Like they share everything. Hmm. And the guys we have, we have permission to speak in each other's life. We encourage one another. But last night at group, uh, one of the guys, his name's Philip. Philip goes, uh, uh, he said, we, we were giving each other permission to warn each other. Hmm. Okay. So we said, hey, hey, so so Philip goes this. Philip said, hey, is there anything in my life that uh, that you see that you need to warn me at? And, and man, that is a, like, like. It's bold. Like. The sucker had balls to ask that question. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he goes, hey, no. tell me where I suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, really, tell me. And uh, so so I, I just, like, I looked at Philip, and and I, I, I just asked Philip. I said, Philip, I think God's got more for you. Mm. I said, um, and and I hope, I, if he's, Philip, I didn't even ask if I could share this story. I hope it's okay. But but it's so real, and so, like, it made me cry. I said, I Philip, I believe God has more for you, and I'm not sure you're chasing him as hard as you used to chase him. Mm. And, dude, he looked at him, and he goes, he goes, you're exactly right. He goes, I've been sitting, but I hadn't been chasing. Mm. And he goes, I need to chase. And I was like, I need you to chase because Philip's one of those guys that he hears from God, and he's like, he has told me so many things throughout my life that have encouraged me. And if that dude's not chasing God, Honestly, he's not helping me um, the way I need to be helped. Like, like he's got words of life for me, yeah. and so selfishly, I want him chasing God. And uh, so, anyway, that that's amazing. But but that's it perfect. was it was that hey, uh, he gave me permission to, to watch sharpen out. him. Yes, he's saying, dude, I am dull. Sharpen me. Yes, yes, and you did. And most guys, number one, most guys wouldn't ask for it, and then number two. 
Like, it's a little scary to tell him that. Yeah. I, I mean, I love the guy, and I, yeah. I don't want him to be mad at me, but he received it because why? Because we're, like, we're just really good friends. I would say most of you listening right now, uh, we either are the person or we know a person we should be speaking into or mm -hmm. calling them out or saying mm -hmm. something, and we just don't. It's mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard to uh, uh, call out a buddy because uh, cause all kinds of insecurities come up in ourself. We're not good enough. Who are we to call someone out? We know all of our shortcomings. But, man, guys are searching and wanting that. Guys love to be called out. I, I remember in sports when I played sports, I loved a guy to call me out. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to show you. Well, it's really – so so we've coined a phrase around here. It's like, coach me up. Mm -hmm. I love that phrase because – like there's some, like we all want to be coached up. Yeah. We all want to be better. So it's like, hey, coach me up. Like tell me an area that I could improve at. And 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 what all that is is you're watching out for each other. Yeah. It, here it, the church lingo for it is spiritual blind spots. Yeah. Like we look for spiritual blind blind spots. And what that looks like is like the example I gave of Jeremy how he speaks into my life. I tell a story, but as I'm telling the story, Jeremy's going, "Hey, I hear a lot of pride in that story." Mm -hmm. Or, or I think you're dealing with anger and it's not what you think it is. Like that's, that's redirecting my mind thought because I can let it drift towards that's right. it's this person, I'm mad at this person, but then you call me out and say, hey, it sounds like a little issue with you dealing with pride or dealing with anger. And then it, or, or it could be this, uh, the other men that want to sharpen you will stick around. Those that don't will Phase well, out. Yeah, they will, phase they'll, out. They'll, they'll fall out of your life. Uh, so a challenge would be <clears throat> between now and the next episode, write down on a sticky note or a piece of paper, Proverbs 27, 17. That's right. Uh, as one man... As iron as sharpens... iron sharpens iron... One man, one man sharpens, sharpens another. another. And just remember that and look at that every day. Hey, guys, see you next time. Oh.